Right now we're running at uh, oh, only about maybe 10% power and it will run like that. It's fine. No issues. So let's go ahead and pick up the pace a little bit. And I'm actually going to leave that switch like that. So here we just pick up the pace a little bit more. We'll let it go around. As soon as this car passes through the switch, we'll go ahead and speed it up a little more. And as soon as it passes through again, I'll speed it up a little more. Now we're just under half power. And again, my switch is thrown. So if anything, I should be having trains derail. But as you can see, no issue. Now we're up to half power. Again, seven cars behind this engine. And everything you see here has been 3D printed. Obviously, screws, electronics, transmitter. We're going to three quarter power. There we're about three quarter power. Again, my switch still in the same position. It's opening as the car is still through. Closes when the last car throws through. And now we're at 100% power. No traction issues. No rail jumping. No derailing. I'm going to guess I've probably already let this train run a thousand laps on this little track. This is a little test track that I put up. And you can see that it's running very well. So now I'm going to slow it back down. Notice also that whenever I slowed it down, I did that slowly with the throttle. But I'm going to jerk it up to full power. Notice it doesn't jerk up to full power. It actually ramps up. And I'm going to bring it down quickly and you're going to notice that it's not going to drop down really very fast. That allows the train and the cars to slow down before um, the uh, train slows down so that the cars do not push the other cars into the engine because of the worm gear setup. Now with the worm gear, it's not going to allow the engine to freewheel down. When the motor stops, the gearing stops. So you can't just um, chop the throttle because when you do, that's like putting the brakes on the engine, but not on the cars. And the momentum of the cars will just drive the other cars into the engine and possibly derail. But now, with it going slow, I can demonstrate my switch. There, I flip the switch, I flip the switch, I flip the switch. You'll hear the detent each time I flip the switch. And that detent in my handle here, I have a pocket for a BB. In my switch mechanism, I have two divots. You're actually hearing the BB drop into the divot. That's what that um, pocket is for and there I've switched it so that it's straight but this way my switch can move around because it's plastic it's going to expand and contract with the temperatures but it's not going to change the position of the switch because of the detent and the fact that it's being held the only way it moves or changes position is if I switch it Again, my train runs very slow. 
whenever I want it to run slow and it runs fast when I want it to run fast. So if you're still with me, I will include some time-lapse video of some of the components of this uh, train set being made. Here you can see uh, the various uh, cars along with the track, the switch mechanisms, as well as even the engine. Uh, the gears are printed in ASA. The track is printed in PETG and all the other components are printed in PLA for the most part. Um, it doesn't matter really which you print in other than the gearing. The worm gear set needs to be printed in ASA. Uh, if you print it in PLA or PETG, it might work a few times around the track uh, and then the, the gears are just going to uh, disintegrate. But the ASA, those gears have worked uh, very well. I'm running two 1250KV brushless motors, as well as two speed controllers, one for each motor. And uh, the running one four channel receiver. And it works very well, um, had no issues. So this is the box car and you might note that my box car also has moving doors or opening and closing doors so um, it has a little bit of um, realism to it um, the next set of videos that i do i'll probably at least do one um, that's going to cover how i went about designing a, one of the cars or the engine it just shows you the basics uh, because you can do it. It uh, just takes a little effort. Um, the good thing is I used a free CAD program called Tinkercad and that program works very well. It's pretty simple to use once you learn a few little uh, tips about using it. Whenever I first started using it I thought it was kind of toyish until I actually couldn't get to my CAD program and I decided I would do a little project in Tinkercad and it didn't take very long and not only did I complete that little project but since then Tinkercad has been my go-to for any of the uh, items that I have designed but uh, again you know there, there's a little bit of a learning curve but it's not that big a deal once you understand a few simple things and hopefully I'll be able to uh, convey that to you in the Tinkercad videos that I produce in building the next car for my little seven car train set. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the hobby.